Hello, Craig Lewis here. I'm with Colonel Mark Tilsley, the Chief Secretary for the Canada and Bermuda Territory. Now, we've been fortunate to have the Colonel here with us for the last three and a half years, but they're under farewell orders to head to be the territorial commanders of the Caribbean Territory. And we're going to miss Colonel Mark and Colonel Sharon very much. And we're grateful that the Colonel has given us this opportunity just to spend a couple of minutes with him and ask him a few music and gospel arts type questions. So Colonel, thank you for letting us it's do great this. Great to be here. Mm -hmm. Great. Let's jump right into this. Uh, you're Canadian, but you went away to the States and uh, started your ministry in that there. Mm -hmm. uh, what's it been like coming back to Canada these last three and a half years? Well, it's uh, interesting to think about even just my musical preparation before I left this country. Um, my high school years spent at, uh, at Booth High School in St. John's, Newfoundland, where I was under the uh, musical leadership of Dr. Eric Abbott, you know, kind of a famous Salvationist musician. And really, you know, playing through high school really introduced me in the core band at St. John's Citadel to uh, music that uh, allowed me, you know, in good preparation to go to the United States and then had the privilege of playing in the staff band and and some wonderful years of music making there, which were all part of really about a 40 year uh, time in, in the US. So coming back to Canada was a, a, a tremendous uh, growth experience for Sharon and I. We had to learn the army here in this great territory. Um, you know, our, our visits had been mostly with family and perhaps going to a corps or two while we would come up, but we had no uh, frame of reference for the breadth of what was taking place through this territory and it's just been fantastic just to see uh, how the Lord's been moving in the music forces through this territory. Great. Now as you've traveled and you've heard and seen lots of things, has there been any musical highlights for you across this journey? Uh, I think there have been lots of them uh, over this time. You know, you start in in Bermuda, where we've uh, just seen, uh, you know, a wonderful uh, divisional band that's been faithful over many years, but also some really dynamic uh, praise uh, music that takes place, full of joy, full of uh, uh, great hope. Uh, but just been wonderful to see both the combination of some real tradition and some contemporary expressions there that they're blending so well. Um, great core uh, music expressions still here in Canada that would be difficult to match almost anywhere in the world, I would think, when we've been to a you know, core like North York, where you can have everything from uh, wonderful band and songsters, and then seeing the investment they're making in like the Music mm -hmm. Academy, uh, you know, the, the London Citadel, we go out to Edmonton, and we're involved in a great music camp there where it was just wonderful to see the joy that was taking place in, in, in those areas. Everything, the highs of a Roy Thompson Hall music program, which is still just absolutely thrilling when we see uh, what takes place there, right to uh, new groups that are just starting up, singing companies where they haven't had them before, where we're seeing you know great uh, enthusiasm. So we've seen the full gamut, Craig, across the territory and are just so encouraged by what we see taking place. Great. Uh, you mentioned the startup of new groups. Uh, I remember when I started at THQ in my role last summer, our, our very first meeting we sat down together and uh, the topic of the uh, Canadian Staff Songsters came up and uh, we were able to work together and get that going. Uh, just wanted to get from you as sort of one of the sort of founding drivers of this group. Um, how do you see this group impacting the territory? Well, I think it's, it's really addressing um, an issue that I think that is also one of concern, but also hope in the fact that uh, we have such a rich uh, legacy of vocal music in the Salvation Army uh, with, with everything from real masterpieces of, of vocal music, uh, right down to the best kind of preparatory materials to get young people singing. And uh, we had seen some decline over the years in terms of that being a priority in some, of the, uh, in some of the core. And I just think that it is so important that we really have a standard bearer that will not only show the very best that can be done in terms of performance, but also something that I pray would be a great encouragement uh, at every level 
of vocal music making across the territory to say uh, great things are possible for people using the most perfect instrument and that's their voice. Mm. Great. Now you mentioned at the core level, um, as we as a music and gospel arts team reach out to core and ministry unit levels, what is it you would like to see from the music groups at our core level? Well, first, I think that I'd say to just about every core in the territory, get in the game. Um, it is so important to realize how powerfully the music groups can connect, particularly young people, into the other aspects of uh, discipleship within the Salvation Army. We've seen this demonstrate over and over again, that if kids will first come and sing, if they'll come and learn to play an instrument, then it makes them uh, much more apt to also be engaged in terms of junior soldiership, Sunday school, it's fun, it's also something that we've seen some retraction in terms of the offerings that are available in the school systems. Uh, it's, it's absolutely crazy because I think that there's good empirical data that shows that if kids are involved in the arts, they also do much better academically in their other subject matter. But it does seem to be one that's very susceptible to budget cuts, etc. Mm -hmm. So for the Army right now, for such a time as this, it seems to be the perfect time for us to go all out in terms of making sure that that's something that we offer at our cores. And I think that it not only is something wonderful intrinsically within itself, it's just great to make music. It praises the Lord, it, it's something that's good for us, it, it speaks to us spiritually, but I think that it also has other uh, uh, aspects that, that benefit us in the fact that it exposes uh, kids to, to something greater about themselves, about the Lord. I say it's just for kids, but I think that we're also discovering kind of worldwide that, um, that adults want to sing too. They want to participate. And it's been so fun to see some adults just starting in, in beginner bands uh, that they've never played instruments before, but they're absolutely loving learning this. But everything from IHQ that I think is opening up uh, IHQ for a, a lunchtime kind of sing-along periodically where people are coming in from the neighborhood just to sing sacred music. I think that uh, we also want to find more and more ways for our people to come in and really get involved. And I think music is a great uh, avenue for people to get involved in our core. Great. Uh, I think you might have alluded to it in this, but the last question I have for you, is there a message that you would like to leave for the Salvationist musicians in this territory? Well, I think it would be two things. Uh, you have great reason to be optimistic about the future. Uh, this is not a time for naysayers. It's not a time to, for hand ringers. I think that uh, take a trip sometime and come to National Music Camp and just see the joy that's there with these young adults who are uh, uh, not only performing at an incredibly high level and over short periods of times just just making some incredible music. That is, is a wonderfully optimistic message in itself. But I think that again, just alluding, as you said, to, to what I'd shared before, it is a time for us to understand that there is great power in music. It's a way for, for people to hear sometimes uh, some of the most critical gospel truths that get through the barriers of words and get through the barriers sometimes of uh, of, of so much that takes place sometimes that people would, would feel is, is perhaps uh, manipulating them or uh, messaging them, but instead uh, some of this is timeless truth that's come through music over many years. And I would just say that the best days for music making in this territory are not behind us, but I absolutely believe that there's still something that's in the present and in our future. I think the best days of music in this territory are still ahead of us. I really believe that. Great. Well, thank you, Colonel. And uh, we wish you and Colonel Sharon well as you head down to the Caribbean. And uh, the MAGA team will be pleased to come down at any point in January or February to the <laughs> exactly. Caribbean. But yeah. we really do thank you for your tremendous support yeah. for all Bless the musicians you, in this territory and wish you well in the days ahead. Thanks so thank much. Thank you, Colonel. Bless you.